Hey guys, welcome back to another quick video. In this video here, we're going to explore three chords that can be done multiple ways. And it's important to note that these chords can be done these different ways for different reasons. Now, a lot of your favorite songs have used these chords D, C, and G. But we're going to show you a few different ways you can actually play them. Now, a lot of songs that use these chords will use the shapes for different reasons. In other words, if I go from a D to a C, to a G, I may want to keep the shape of these two fingers and just move them over one more. So what do I mean by that? Make a C shape and then move your second and third finger over a fret and now you've got a G chord this way. And you're going to see on the screen there and I'll show you how, uh, how to look at that in the form of chords. All right, giving you a little bit of a closer up version here of the G. Now in this sense here, you can see up above what it looks like. We've got our third finger on the third fret of the sixth string, second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, have the next strings open, and then have your pinky on the third fret there of the first string. So that's one way that you can play the G chord. Another way you can play the G chord it's the same shaping, but the fingers change. Now I've got my first finger on the second fret of the fifth string, second finger on the third fret of the sixth, and then my third finger is going to be on the third fret of the first string. A lot of times when I'm changing between chords, um, you might not be fast at doing it at first, and a lot of it has to do with muscle memory. So a lot of things that I always tell my students is, when you're making the changes with the chords, what you might want to do is, actually not strum down, but just let your fingers go back and forth between the chords. For instance, this is a C chord here, and then I'm going to the G chord. C chord, G chord. Get your fingers used to it and form that muscle memory. Now, there's a lot of bands I said before that use these type of chords. Now, if we were to look at something like Sweet Home Alabama, we might want to play the D chord first. So what we're going to do now is a C at 9 to a G. Okay, so a D. Now what's important to note here is I went from the D to what the C chord you might have played this way before to now this way, which is a C at 9 to the G. So in this case here, we're doing very minimal movement, but we're only using our first and second finger to move from the 1. C at 9 to the G. Now the whole time I'm keeping my finger, my third finger, on the third fret of the second string and my fourth finger on the third fret of the first string. So you can practice back and forth so you can get used to actually doing that. So once again, something like Sweet Home Alabama. Drumming pattern up there for you too, if you want. So, Sweet Home Alabama is a great example of that and using those three chords. Uh, while the D, C, and G are used quite a bit, um, you could do a G to a C at 9, to a D, back to a C at 9, back to G. And that was a quick. G to C at 9. Um, that's Stone in Love by Journey. So again, using those chord shapes. Okay, but going back to the D, C at 9, and G, we can also do something like Your Time is Gonna Come by Led Zeppelin. So once again, I can still do a simple strumming pattern with that as well. What's nice about these is as you're playing these chords and you're doing like a C at 9 to that G there, they sound very full and very bright. So if you're playing it acoustic, you know, around the campfire or whatever that may be, um, it's going to sound very full. So once again, another song like Your Time Is Gonna Come by Led Zeppelin is another song that uses those particular chord changes. Uh, another one is Werewolf in London. And again, 
that's going back and forth between the D, C and 9, and the G there. Now, in the case that you want to go back and forth between the D and maybe not a C at 9, but the regular C we showed you in the beginning to a G, we could do something like cuts like a knife. quick strumming pattern there, but the point is when I go back and forth this time between a C and a G, I'm actually using different fingering. So I'm actually doing this on purpose because it makes it easier to make the change from the C to the G. There's so many songs that use these three chords. Maybe even something like uh, Sweet Child of Mine. You've got your D, C, and G. There's other chords that are involved in the song, but D, 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 C, two. And you're going to see it back to G. And then go back to D. So now you're actually extending those chords a little bit longer. I'll show you a little strumming pattern there for that, too. That's a very common um, strumming pattern, but also a very common pattern that we're talking about between the D, C, and the G chord. There's also one by the cult, uh, She Sells Sanctuary. <laughs> to mind is the Van Morrison song and uh, the one called Gloria. Now while it's not in this exact key, uh, the key is I have that lesson on here as well, but it's E D A E D A. But we're changing the key now. So by doing that, we're actually going lower. strumming pattern there. And we'll, again, we're just giving you a basic strumming pattern. You can do whatever you like, but D, C, G, D, C, G. What I want you to know is the strumming pattern, I'm sorry, not the strumming pattern, but the, the actual shape. I'm going back and forth between the C and the G, and I'm doing this shape purposely because I could go D, C, and I, G. It sounds the other way, doing the D, C, G, D. But for the most part, those three chords can be used multiple different ways. You could even come up with your own content, your own songs based around those three chords. So your D, your C, and your G is one way you can do it. The other way again is D, C at 9, G. So there's a lot of different ways to do things, but these three chords are crucial, especially if you want to keep playing a lot of other tunes that are based around these chords. But using the D, C, and G trick, and when I say trick, I mean like knowing that you have different options is going to actually help out your playing. Keep practicing it that way. Keep practicing in a way that um, even if you're not strumming the chords themselves and you're going through the chords, get used to the muscle memory because that's one of the most important things. People forget that. Um, they might get tripped up in actually playing the chords, and then what happens is sometimes while they're playing the chords, they can't make the quick changes between the chords. So, I always tell people if you're having trouble with that, just be sure to go through the chords, and you can go through them without actually strumming, right? You can do that. Um, so for the most part, those are the only chords that we're going to talk about today, 
Uh, the DCG Trick is a great song. How many songs do you know that use these three chords? Be sure to leave a comment below. And uh, don't forget, on this channel we've got multiple things. We've got guitar tutorials, we've got uke tutorials, um, we've got a lot of cool stories. And I'm going to start adding more things like this on here that involve uh, songs that you can play multiple different ways or using certain amount of chords that you can play a multiple amount of songs. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.